The Mystery of Zhang Gong Chapter 10 Zhang Ping followed Wang Yan into a quiet room. Wang Yan ordered someone to serve tea before dismissing everyone and closing the doors. For this case, I wasn't as insightful as you, after all, you knew the ins and outs more than me. But, you found a criminal and I found a criminal, in the end, there wasn't much difference. Zhang Ping said, today, in the court hall, if Master Wang hadn't forced Li Qi then this case would only be solved after Jin Lifa woke up. Wang Yan paced forward two steps. Yes, yes. The evidence against Li Qi was actually insufficient, I was just bluffing. The clothes Li Qi wore when he committed the crime should be in his room, on the beam of the roof or under the floor tiles. Wang Yan's brows pinched together as he studied Zhang Ping. Are you saying you already guessed Li Qi was the perpetrator? Zhang Ping slowly said, Jin Lifa was stabbed from the front. The student only guessed the perpetrator to be someone from the troop. It was Master who found out it was Li Qi. Wang Yan snorted heavily, he pulled out a chair and sat on it. I don't need you to leave me some face, I won't believe it. How did you identify the main perpetrator's identity? Come tell me. Wang Yan raised his sleeves to pour tea, in the dense tea mist, Zhang Ping's reflection lowered his eyelids. This student just thought, not a lot of people in the world knows how to use drugs. If an ordinary person went to a pharmacy to prepare ecstasy or bought some strange medicinal products, it definitely get noticed. And the crucial point to Li Niang's case were drugs, she was defiled under the effects of drugs, then was harmed by drugs. Wang Yan's hand slightly paused. I see. Yes, in this world, those who cover their faces to commit crimes whilst also using a fragrance would probably only come down to two types of people. One would be flower thieves accustomed to wandering Jianghu, however, to become intimate with Li Niang for several months wasn't the style of a flower thief. Note, flower thief, rapist. The other type was that of a physician. Physicians could enter a residence's inner rooms and see Li Niang, since he would have smelled of medicinal herbs, he had to use a strong fragrance to cover it. This case was like a dusty cobweb and Zhang Ping just coincidentally found the crucial thread, it wasn't a big deal. Wang Yan picked up his teacup. When Jin Lifa was harmed, you guessed it was the murderer who killed Li Niang who did it, was it because of your script? Actually, it could have been a vendetta. According to my many years of experience, several seemingly related cases turned out to be just coincidences and had different inside stories. You just happened to come across a rarity. Zhang Ping said, Master is right. In the beginning, nobody could guess these two cases were related because there was no evidence. It was clear that two people intended to murder Jin Lifa. The assailant had to be a member of the troop and the other person had to be responsible for setting up the puzzle. However, who was the mastermind, who was the accomplice, and the reason behind the assault were all unclear. Wang Yan turned his teacup. Since everything was unclear, how did you link it to Li Niang's case? Zhang Ping continued wearing that dead expression Wang Yan found displeasing to the eye to say, this student had two pieces of evidence. 1. When Mr. Jin was in a coma, he mentioned the great yellow immortal. He was overwhelmed by the foulness of manure, his muddle-headed words were untrustworthy. 2. When Master came to question me, you asked about what happened that year. You hadn't asked before, but when suddenly asked it became obvious the perpetrator had deliberately leaked some information to Master. Wang Yan turned his teacup again. What you're saying is, me believing in the perpetrator's lies had, on the contrary, given you clues. In a steady tempo, Zhang Ping said, this student just thought the perpetrator knew and cared too much about Li Niang's matter. This wouldn't be the case if the perpetrator had nothing to do with her. Additionally, this student knew that the troop had invited a physician over to treat his throat, so the cause of Mr. Jin's diarrhea that night must have been laxatives dash. Wang Yan interrupted him and waved his hand. Okay, 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 you can leave now. This case was clearly not that small, 
but with how Zhang Ping described it, it's as if it wasn't a big deal. When Wang Yan carefully thought over it, he realized it truly wasn't a complicated matter. However, the fact he unexpectedly couldn't see through it made Wang Yan feel a suffocating panic. Looking at Zhang Ping made him feel even more irritatingly panicked. Although he felt this way, when Zhang Ping was about to cross the threshold, Wang Yan spoke again. By the way, for the preliminary exam this year, you better climb onto the list. I want to see exactly what role you'd play when you enter the imperial court. Zhang Ping said, this student will try his best to not let down master's expectations. I'll do my best to climb on it. He cupped his hands respectfully before leaving. When he left the Ministry of Justice, the market was already bustling with activity. Zhang Ping searched through his Changshan and fished out a few coins from a narrow slit, he'd hidden it in a hurry when he was taken to the Ministry of Justice. When he entered his prison cell and changed into the prisoner's uniform, his Changshan was stripped off and torn, but his money still remained. Zhang Ping took the money to a stall by the streets, he drank a bowl of porridge and ate half a pancake. The benefits of being in the capital was its large size and population, nobody took notice of anyone, even if they'd just come out of prison. After eating breakfast, Zhang Ping followed the crowd out of the city gates. Outside the capital, the reed leaves by the river were completely plucked, Stakes of reed stems stood upright under the sun, completely bare. Zhang Ping walked east following the river. He knew there was a depression in the waters, with reeds growing in the valley over there, there shouldn't be anyone around. At noon, Zhang Ping went back to his dorm with reed leaves pocketed, Chen Chuo already knew the case was over, so, with great joy, he bought some alcohol and food from the streets to celebrate. After a bath, Zhang Ping didn't eat nor drink, instead, he began moving around in the yard. He soaked the reed leaves in water and meticulously picked out several pickled salted duck eggs from their jar one by one. In the evening, Lan Zhu went back to his residence from his ministry Yaman, just as the sedan chair arrived by the entrance, its speed suddenly became abnormal. Lan Zhu said, which scholar is trying to curry favor with me? You're even blocking the entrance to send gifts, causing my servants to have to expel you and agitate me. Lan Ju lifted a crack of his sedan curtain and distantly saw a familiar figure. Bring me his gift so I can take a look. The entourage paused before responding with a yes, after a while, they carried something over. It was a lidded basket made of bamboo strips. Lan Ju opened the lid. Filling half the basket were neatly placed Zongzi the reed leaves carrying a fragrant scent, still warm. Lan Ju placed the lid back on, handed the basket back to the entourage, and indifferently said, throw it away. The next day was the Dragon Boat Festival, so he didn't have to attend court early in the morning, Lan Hui was taken away to the Lu residence, so only Lan Ju and a group of servants were left in the big residence. Lan Ju felt quite dispirited. These past few years, he was always alone during Chinese New Year and other festivities, no matter how well made the zongzi from his kitchen were, it didn't taste like much when eating alone. Overcome with boredom, he changed into thin clothing, a fan tucked inside his sleeve, and exited his residence. He let his small sedan chair stop near the market. Lan Ju got off the sedan chair and casually looked around, the sun was poisonous, so he walked along the shady side of the street. He walked past a stall selling colorful sachets. Ahead, under an old wall, that stall was still erected, the tables and chairs under the scaffolding still as empty as anything without even half a customer. The scholar selling noodles wasn't standing by the stove either, limply, under the shade of the scaffolding, he was holding a book reading. Lan Ju walked to the stall, Zhang Ping raised his head and slowly stood up. Lan Ju asked, are there any more noodles? Zhang Ping expressionlessly answered, No. There's porridge and zongzi. Lan Ju walked under the scaffolding and sat down on an empty seat. Zhang Ping carried over a bowl of porridge and two serves of zongzi, setting them onto the table. It was millet porridge, boiled until it was rather thick, 
and had pieces of white fragments inside. Lanju tasted it. They were salted egg whites. Lanju casually asked, By the way, is Chen Shuo all right? Zhang Ping serenely answered, Not all right. He ate too much Zongzi and was too full, he's currently asleep in bed. Lanju peeled open a Zongzi, it was made with jujube. There are egg whites in the porridge, so why isn't this egg yolk Zongzi? Zhang Ping said depressingly, Egg yolk Zongzi, finished. Just then, Lanju saw with sweeping eyes a shallow basket with several duck eggs still lying inside on a table. Then I'll just get a salted duck egg, with a green shell. Zhang Ping hummed in response and turned around, from the table came pounding thumps. After a while, a white porcelain plate was placed in front of Lanju, and Lanju couldn't help but laugh. On the plate lay two salted egg yolks dripping with golden red oil. End chapter The Mystery of Zhang Gong Chapter 11 After Lanju finished eating the Zongzi, he paid the bill and returned straight to his residence, not saying anything more to Zhang Ping. Zhang Ping had silently accepted the money, not saying anything to him either. In the evening, Lan Hui returned from the Lu residence with a miserable scowl on his face, he said to Lanju, Daidi, in the future, can I not go to uncle's residence? Although Lan Ju's discipline towards Lan Hui was strict, he rarely busied with ministry work within his residence, in addition to the family tutor's good temper, Lan Hui was used to being spoiled. Each time he visited the strict and well-disciplined Lu residence, he'd feel terribly stuffy, and would always complain he didn't like to go. As usual, Lan Ju began lecturing him. Your mother passed away early. Whenever your grandmother, uncle, and auntie see you, it's like they're seeing your mother, they all feel great care and concern for you. Even if you've grown up, you must remember to show filial respect towards them. Your Biaoji Yi Tong is filled with good knowledge, you should learn more from him. Lan Hui's lips tightened, he glanced up at Lan Ju with a wronged expression before lowering his head again and left with another miserable scowl. At midnight, while he was still asleep, Lan Ju heard a fearful cry, he hurriedly got up and rushed next door. Lan Hui was curled up on the corner of his bed, clutching his blanket as he shivered, several servants gathered in front of his bed to comfort him. Lan Ju looked at his tearful face and took a handkerchief from the hands of a young child standing aside, he soaked it in a basin of warm water and wrung it before walking towards the bed. You are a dignified young man. If even a nightmare can scare you into tears, how will you accomplish great things in the future? Lan Hui buried his face into his blanket, unspeaking. Lan Ju's brows furrowed as he passed the handkerchief to him. Take it. Wipe your face and go back to sleep. Lan Hui didn't move nor spoke. Lan Ju's brows furrowed deeper. The young child standing aside hurriedly said, Master, young master cannot be blamed. While the young master was celebrating at the Lu residence today, he heard about a strange matter and was frightened. Even the elders there said the matter was strange. Young master is young and pure-hearted, it is pardonable for him to have nightmares at night. Lan Ju smiled. How could there possibly be so many mischievous ghosts and demons in this world? They're all just wild fantasies in people's hearts. Besides, we have mugwort stuck on our doors and realgar in our bodies, how could you still be afraid of them? Note, mugworts and realgar, during the dragon boat festivals, many people would participate in activities such as hanging mugworts and drinking realgar wine, also known as rice wine, as it's thought to prevent disease and evil whilst also promoting good health and well-being. Lan Huey's shoulders trembled before he slowly raised his face, both his eyes a bright red. I saw it creep over. Lan Ju helplessly said, then come sleep with me and let Daidi gain more insight into what a ghost looks like. At lightning speed, Lan Hui climbed out of bed, took the handkerchief from Lan Ju's hands to wipe his face, and followed Lan Ju to his bedroom. He stood by the bed before timidly raising his eyes to look at Lan Ju. Lan Ju raised his eyebrows. Sleep on the inside. That way, 
when the ghost comes, it'll have to crawl over my body first. Lan Hui giggled before making his way onto the bed and laid close to the wall. Lan Ju laid on the bed and let the servants turn out the lights and leave. When the candles went out and the door closed, Lan Hui trembled. Lan Ju closed his eyes whilst Lan Hui clung wordlessly to the wall. Lan Ju evened his breathing. A long while passed before Lan Hui turned over with a rustle and gently moved beside Lan Ju, he reached out and grabbed Lan Ju's sleeves. After a moment, his breathing evenly lengthened as he soundly entered his dreams. Lan Ju, on the other hand, wasn't able to sleep that well. He briefly took a shallow nap, when he guessed it was time to attend court, he gently got up. Lan Hui was still sleeping soundly. When Lan Ju pulled out his sleeve from his clutches, he slightly moved a little and clutched his thin blanket before continuing to sleep. After court, Lan Ju immediately went to the Ministry of Rights Yaman and ate breakfast there. He continued working until the evening when he came back home. When he arrived at the hall, Lan Hui stepped out from behind the folding screen and greeted him. Lan Ju raised his eyebrows and looked at him. You're not afraid of ghosts anymore. Lan Hui silently drooped his head. Lan Ju sat on the chief chair. Would you like to tell me exactly what story you heard at your uncle's residence yesterday? Lan Hu raised his eyes and looked at Lan Ju before whispering, Uncle bought a brush pot. He said it was made with the cremains of dead people, so it's haunted by ghosts. Lan Ju frowned. His late father-in-law, Fu Liuxian, had never believed in the supernatural, those from the Lu residence wouldn't dare to even mention the word ghost. Whenever the women in the family went to the temple to burn incense, they all had to hide it from the old man and secretly leave, acting more cautious than thieves. Although Liuxian had passed for many years now, his remaining influence still hovered around the residence. Even during Chinese New Year or other festivities, those from the residence would burn incense and paper offerings for the old man whilst repeatedly murmuring things like, We know that you don't like this, but please accept your children and grandchildren's filial piety. Since this matter could even make his brother-in-law, someone his father-in-law had personally disciplined, spit out the word ghost, it must truly be unusual. Lan Ju asked, Have you personally seen this brush pot? Lan Hui shook his head, the rim of his eyes turning red again. I saw the brush pot placed on uncle's desk, so I touched it, as a result, Auntie started crying and said it's haunted by a vengeful spirit that wants to take revenge against uncle. She even had me wipe my hands with the incense ashes from their ancestral hall and told me to not eat meat for the next few days. Lan Ju asked, what does the brush pot look like? Lan Hui replied, it's just a white porcelain pot that doesn't even have decorative designs on it. It broke before, so there's a mark on it. Could it be that the mark looks like a branch? Lan Hui nodded with flattened lips. Lan Ju rubbed his forehead. Understood. I will have to continue investigating this ghost's origin. Go to the study first and continue studying. Lan Hui blinked his rabbit-like eyes. Didi, I've studied for the entire day. I'm scared. Lan Ju responded with a stiff expression. Why do I always tell you there are no ghosts or demons in this world? Whether it be demons or evil spirits, if your heart has no openings, if you don't believe, think, listen, or ask about them, they won't approach or harm you. Right now you're not listening to such teachings, so you've been infected by corruption, even your uncle is afraid. For now, I won't surrender. Right now, you can only stand in front of Sage's portrait, read Sage's books, resist with your overwhelming righteousness, and never let your distracting thoughts return, otherwise. With a sallow complexion, Lan Hui turned around and went straight into the study. Lan Hui slept all night in the study, even his meals were eaten inside. The next day, after court, Lan Ju directly encountered Wang Yan. Wang Yan hummed with laughter as he said, I've heard that Minister Ian's brother-in-law has been caught by a vengeful spirit. Lan Ju grudgingly said, Don't mention this matter. Even my son has gotten frightened, always crying that there's a ghost. 
I'm wondering what kind of Taoist instrument I should buy back to amuse him. Wang Yan smiled. Your brother-in-law has never committed anything that should warrant a guilty conscience. Just one miscarriage of justice, yet he'd never forget it in this lifetime. I'd say either he's thinking too much, or someone's playing ghost. Lan Ju said, six years ago, I was still a small official in the Zongshu Yaman, I only vaguely heard that a participant of the imperial examination had been wronged. The court hadn't investigated well and made a misjudgment. But because I didn't know the full details, I've always had suspicions. At that time, who was the one responsible for this case? Everything had to be carried out with rigor and care, so how could there be a misjudgment? Note, Zongshu, a title for civil servants. Zongshus are usually responsible for assisting the one in charge, compiling laws and regulations, recording, translating, and other transcription works. Wang Yan sighed heavily. Alas. I've read over the files for that case, if it happened today without guidance from our predecessor's mistakes and the case was handed to those old pedantics, the case might still be misjudged. At first, it was just an ordinary case, the source was from the fundraising literary meeting. This matter you should know about. Lan Ju nodded, everyone knew about the literary meeting from six years ago. At that time, several northwestern counties were suffering from severe droughts. The court took advantage of the upcoming imperial examination, the opportunity to gather all the scholars in the capital, and allowed the Ministry of Revenue to pioneer the unity of several large trade associations. They set up a half-court, half-private literary meeting, using calamity as the topic, they enlisted poems and paintings, limiting one per person. They chose the best work to auction off among the trade associations and the funds raised were used for disaster relief. The judges were either famous, virtuous and prestigious members of the gentry or scholars of far-reaching reputations. Winning this literary meeting was equal to gaining an extra opportunity of getting your name placed on the imperial examinations listing, or maybe even end up as one of the top three by default, hence, all examines scrambled to participate. Eventually, Jiangzi examinee Chen Zichen's Plum Blossom Poem 1. On the second day, a group of scholars jointly complained to higher authorities that Chen Zichen's Plum Blossom Poem wasn't he created by him, but stolen from an article belonging to Ma Hong, another scholar. Ma Hong said he'd been thinking hard for many days. One night, he suddenly dreamt of a beautiful verse, he worked on it for the entire night. His mental and physical energy withered, he became ill in bed, so he missed the submission deadline. He didn't expect Chen Zichen to steal his article during his visit. Because the dates were too close, it was impossible to judge who was the original creator from their handwriting. The Ministry of Justice, together with the Ministry of Rights, made a detailed investigation on these two examines. The ones organizing this case were the Ministry of Justice's chief minister and your brother-in-law who, at that time, was the Ministry of Rights assistant minister. After the investigation, they found that Ma Hong was an examinee selected from northwest Genlian country. His family was poverty-stricken and was willing to sacrifice everything they had to provide for his education. He was diligent and simple, careful and modest. Chen Zichen, on the other hand, came from a wealthy family. His grandfather once worked as a prefectural magistrate, his father was a member of the gentry from the wealthier part of Jiangxi County, and his mother was also a lady of a distinguished family. Chen Zichen was arrogant, willful, and undisciplined. After he arrived at the capital, he rented a luxury property to reside in and would paint the town red all day long, those honest examines who arrived around the same time as him never interacted with him and he'd often ridicule people with humble backgrounds. More than a dozen examines jointly wrote a letter to the authorities testifying for Ma Hong, they said when Ma Hong wrote his poem, he'd discussed words and sentences with them several times. Everyone could prove this poem was indeed written by Ma Hong. They accused Chen Zichen of stealing it. Plum Blossom poem expressed one's experience of improving themselves with practice and their unyielding feelings of ambition to make progress. 
Several officials that presided over the case felt Chen Zichen wasn't someone who could write out this kind of literary work. The Ministry of Justice then investigated Chen Zichen's previous literary works and exam papers from his participation in the state and county examinations, and found that Chen Zichen's previous literary works were mediocre, far too different from the writing style of Plum Blossom Poem. In addition, there were many omissions on his state and county examinations exam papers, after further investigations, it was found that during the state and country examinations, Chen Zichen's father gave the judges weighty gifts. Wang Yan said, that year, Grand Tutor Yun was still the Prime Minister, he always argued that there were suspicions in this case. For Chen Zichen's supposed theft of an article, the evidence was insufficient after all, as for his father's gift to the judges, although it violated the law, it may not necessarily have been a bribe, it could have been an expression of thankfulness. To determine whether this really was a case of fraud, they should take out all exam papers from both examines and compare them. Lan Ju said, if they listened to Grand Tutor Yun, there wouldn't have been any future injustices. Wang Yan sneered. Exactly. But those who managed the case back then, including your brother-in-law, all said a hedonistic son of rich parents who relied on bribing his examiner to gain a scholarly honor couldn't possibly have written Plum Blossom poem. They even said there were rumors Chen Zichen's father had entrusted someone to toss about in Minister Yun's bed for social connections. Hence, the previous emperor instructed Minister Yun to not interfere in this matter. As a result, the Ministry of Rights cancelled Chen Zichen's eligibility to participate in the imperial exam, Chanzishan's reputation was swept away. For a while, everyone reviled him as a literary thief. The Ministry of Justice ordered the Jiangxi County to thoroughly investigate any fraud cases for their state and county examinations. Chen Zichen's father was arrested by authorities for interrogation. They even investigated Chen Zichen's grandfather's time as a prefectural magistrate and his old affairs where he was suspected of accepting bribes. The Chen residence was destroyed. Of course, the name behind Plum Blossom poem was changed to Mahong. Everyone in the capital clapped their hands in satisfaction. Chen Zichen committed suicide by throwing himself in the lake, before his death, he used his blood to cover an entire pavilion by the lake with words describing his injustice. At that time, Chen Zichen's father was already locked up in prison and his mother, Chen Nebai, went to the capital to collect his body. By the time she arrived at the capital, she'd already become blinded by tears. Chen Zichen's body had decayed in the lake, so it already been incinerated. Due to the situation at that time, those who'd become friends with him didn't dare publicly collect his body, instead, they secretly kept some of his cremains, hidden in a white porcelain pot brush. Chen Nebai beat the drums to complain about her son's death but was driven out by the ministry and beaten to death in front of the Ministry of Justice's Yaman entrance. Note, beat the drums, in front of courthouses in ancient China, there'd be a large drum people could hit to alert the people inside they've suffered from injustice or a crime. Then, the comparison results between the two examination papers came out from Jiangxi County, it was revealed that although Chen Zichen's literary works indeed had omissions, compared to the other examines, he was definitely eligible for the imperial examinations listing. Several people couldn't put up with it any longer, so they stood up and testified for Chen Zichen. They said, on the day he visited Ma Hong, he'd already submitted his Plum Blossom poem, in addition, he hadn't even entered the inner room, he left straight after putting some things down in the central room. The court reopened the case, with Prime Minister Yuntang presiding over it. After months of investigation, of comparing all kinds of evidence, they found out Chen Zichen was indeed wrongly accused. The dozen or so examines who testified for Ma Hong also confessed they had very good relationships with Ma Hong, because they disliked Chen Zichen, they faked their testimonies. Plum Blossom poem was truly written by Chen Zichen, he wrote this poem because of his mother. Chen Zichen was the only child in his family, although arrogant since childhood, he was a filial son. After his mother married into the Chen family, she couldn't give birth for many years, 
she was ridiculed by her mother-in-law and jeered at by her sisters. It wasn't until she gave birth to a son did she finally begin living a good life with her in-laws. Chen Zijhen studied and participated in examinations for a rank, hoping to make his mother a lady with a distinguished title so she could hold her head high in front of her sisters. During those years Chen Nebai was ridiculed, she'd embroider plum blossoms. She was a lady from a distinguished family, so she was also quite talented and created a few poems about plum blossoms. In Chen Zijhen's plum blossom poem, he used a few verses from his mother's poems. After the case's truth came to light, the imperial examination had already passed, Ma Hong was made a successful candidate and was conferred an official rank. The Ministry of Justice sentenced Ma Hong to immediate beheading, even to death, he insisted that it was Chen Zijhen who stole his work. After the case closed, Minister Yun's prestige flourished further. Do Fang committed suicide as an apology and your brother-in-law resigned, his guilty conscience holding up even to this day. It's only because of this so-called suffering from serious injury that the court is in today's situation. Truthfully, Ma Hong and others gathering to make false accusations make this an extremely ordinary case, it's common to see such tricks with each passing generation, so it's not clever. But because Chen Zijhen came from a wealthy family and Ma Hong from poverty, most people thought this is a case of the rich bullying the poor. In addition, Chen Zijhen usually didn't know how to conduct himself with integrity so many of the scholars who accused him were poor. This is the so-called three men talking makes a tiger and public clamour can melt metals, where there's a peak, there'll be agitation for momentum. The common people who didn't understand the situation were agitated, all of them called Chen Zijhen a criminal. The imperial court thought they were complying with the public opinion, but instead, they settled an unjust case. Note. Asterisk three men talking makes a tiger, an idiom meaning repeated rumors become fact. Asterisk public clamour can melt metals, an idiom meaning too many rumors can confuse what's right and wrong. Lan Ju asked, what happened to the people who participated in the false accusation? Wang Yan replied, a few of the masterminds were beheaded or tattooed on the face and sent to exile, but then it was found that many people were just going with the tide to hit a person already down, so either their sentences were lighter or they could never obtain a rank for the rest of their lives. The lightest sentence was dispensing one's rank and ordering them to not participate in the imperial examination for the next few years. The court even built a memorial hall by the Lake Chen Zijhen suicide and conferred title to his parents. The ancestral hall in Chen's residence at Jiangxi was also rebuilt. Said person was already dead, doing all this was just to keep up appearances. Note, tattooed on the face, this was a punishment during ancient China called ink punishment, where criminals would, usually, get the character for prisoner tattooed on their faces. Crimes that would usually lead to such a punishment were adultery and robbery. After saying all this, they reached Du and Rui's entrance. Lan Ju cupped his hands in farewell towards Wang Yan before leaving for his ministry Yaman. The sky was overcast, the ashy horizon hung with dark clouds that appeared like vengeful ghosts unwilling to leave. When he arrived at his ministry Yaman, a subordinate reported to Lan Ju that the Ministry of Rights received an anonymous letter. The letter arrived very strangely, yesterday, Lan Ju was the last to leave the ministry, yet he hadn't seen the letter. Early this morning, the scribe found the letter on the inner courtyard's door lock. The letter paper was ordinary rag paper, the handwriting crude and blotched. With everything broken and in disorder, it wrote. Examinee Malian is a literary thief. Stealing works and robbing reputation, he's not worthy of participating in the imperial examination. End chapter. The Mystery of Zhang Gong Chapter 12 The subordinate asked Lan Ju what to do with this letter. Lan Ju threw the letter into a drawer. Just act as if we didn't see it. The subordinate replied, but why was this letter on the door? How about we invite the Ministry of Justice dash? Lan Ju waved his hand. It might be a prank, so there's no need to fuss over it, 
how could anyone with the ability to insert a letter on the Ministry of Rights doors not understand that the eligibility of an examinee to partake in this exam cannot be influenced by such little reasons? According to the Imperial Orders, our Ministry of Rights is only responsible for organizing the Imperial examinations. Even our Chief Minister cannot make such a big decision as to determine if an examinee is eligible. Lan Hui slept in the study for two days. On the evening of the third day, Lan Ju returned to the residence and handed him a brocade box. This is a Taoist instrument I purchased for you. If you wear it next to your skin, you'll no longer need to be afraid of the ghost. Lan Hui delightedly opened it. Inside the brocade box was a wild boar carved from white jade, a pair of tusks protruding from it, on its back was a hole with a string of red rope tied through it. Lan Ju hung the wild boar around Lan Hui's neck and rubbed his head before speaking his sincere and earnest wishes, the monster you provoked at your uncle's house is a dryad. Wild boars can specifically damage trees, so they're fated to be ill-matched. Note, wild boars and dryads, dryads are known as tree demons, which is why wild boars are their nemesis. When Lan Hui first saw the wild boar, he wore a doubtful expression, after hearing Lan Ju's words, he immediately cheered up and turned the wild boar over a few times in observation, stroking its tusks. Didi, does eating more pork lead to the same effect? Lan Ju respectfully replied, that's right, but eating ordinary, domestic pork is useless, you have to eat wild boar meat. You can stop listening to your auntie's advice to practice a few days of vegetarianism, I asked the kitchen to prepare a wild boar and Yunnan ham shreds dish tonight. Eat more, stop being picky. Lan Hui nodded vigorously, he went to the front hall and ran to the garden to gamble happily. After the Dragon Boat Festival, Zhang Ping discontinued his business. Wife Jin had prepared a generous gift for him as gratitude, but Zhang Ping declined some of it, the rest he had no choice but to accept, yet it was still enough for him to stop worrying about food and clothing until the examination's result announcement. Chen Zhou also basked in the light. After the Jin family case, Zhang Ping's reputation experienced a great tremor, even the examines who claimed to despise him had to admit he had some talents. It was a pity he lacked character. Such talent, yet the heavens actually bestowed it upon someone with such a sloppy character, it was truly a great pity. Chen Zhou would angrily say, as soon as that Ma Lian and those sons of bitches who pretend to be all noble and virtuous see someone, they'd say they feel sorry for your talents and character. Truthfully, they just can't bear to see the good in others, so they'll act sinister in roundabout ways. In fact, they're the most shameless. Every day, they'd say other people have bad characters, but who knows what dirty tricks they performed countlessly behind everyone's back. It's just... Ordinary people aren't like them, they just stare as these people wickedly tarnish others. Sooner or later, they'll be performing a dog-eat-dog -dog show. Let's just talk about that Molly Ann, just that small reputation of his was from plagiarizing. Right now, every matter involving him accepting money for nominal works has been exposed, yet he's still jumping with no sense of shame. Why aren't the heavens taking him? Zhang Ping went into the chicken coop without a word. He'd originally wanted to tell Chen Zhou that this matter couldn't be blamed on Ma Lian, it was Mr. and Mrs. Jin who asked him for the nominal works rather than Ma Lian seeking someone out himself to write them. Since Ma Lian accepted, it could only mean he was greedy for money. But Chen Zhou had always found Ma Lian to be particularly displeasing to the eyes, if he said it, he was afraid Chen Zhou would spiral into another tantrum of temper, so Zhang Ping decided to stay silent and concentrate on investigating if Ant Fang's little chick was swallowed by Senior Wang's old, black cat, or cripple Ma San Hua. Chen Zhou stomped his feet by the chicken coop. However, Ma Lian must definitely be hating on us both. Because of this matter, he was forced to admit that you wrote the play for him, even if he goes around saying you assumed his name and took his place, he isn't familiar with the facts. Anyone sharp-sighted would probably not believe him, he he. Examination day came in the blink of an eye. According to the rules, 
After setting the test questions, Lanju and any other officials who participated in setting the questions or knew the answers were locked up in unity, not to be released until the end of the exam. Hence, Lanju wouldn't be able to return home for several days. He was worried about leaving Lanju in the residence alone, but since the eldest grandson of the Lu family, Lu Tong Ai Ai, was participating in this exam, he couldn't leave Lan Hui with them and arouse suspicion. Lan Ju considered for a long time before he decided to ask Wang Yan. Wang Yan agreed with extreme ease, so Lan Ju immediately ordered someone to pack Lan Hui's luggage and personally took him to the Wang residence. Lan Ju always felt Lan Hui's temperament was a bit stuffy and listless. Deliberately sending Lan Hui to the Wang family was also to make him more vigorous. Although Wang Yan's sons were mischievous, they were superior in terms of liveliness. Wang Yan's assistant minister residence was at the capital's north, on Rongan Street. Whilst Lan Ju was sending Lan Hui to the Wang Yan residence, he saw, at the courtyard, several heads stretched out from a big tree's branches, making faces and throwing stones at them. That old tree couldn't be considered stout, the branches trembled. Wang Yan loudly yelled at the tree, telling them to get their asses here to greet Senior Lan, several children made eye signals at each other before climbing down the tree. They yelled out greetings, Senior Lan. Wang Yan lifted the ears of two of the older children and apologetically said to Lan Ju, These monkey brats from my family have never been disciplined, please excuse us. Lan Ju smilingly swept his gaze over the five children before him and said, Brother Mo Wen, don't you only have three sons? These two are. Wang Yan coughed and loosened his clutch on one ear. He pointed to the shorter two buffoons. I also have two daughters. Hearing that there were girls, Lan Hui blushed and stammeringly greeted them. The two girls curled their lips, the bigger one threw a small stone at him. Wang Yan pulled a long face and shouted, Tut, stop making trouble. Then he roared to the corridors, Why aren't you women taking care of your children? Always making me lose face in front of outsiders. From the corridors, There'd always been a ringing hula hula sound of mahjong tiles being rubbed and women giggling. The sound of mahjong tiles paused before a woman's voice leisurely sounded, then according to Master, it's as if the one restraining and not letting us take care of the children are ourselves. Wang Yan's complexion turned purple. Lan Ju quickly found a topic to change the subject, he suddenly caught a glimpse of a youth standing on a veranda in the distance wearing light clothing, their features outstanding and gorgeousness incomparable. The youth distantly smiled at Lan Ju and cupped their hands in greeting before turning around back to the side room. Lan Ju returned the greeting and said to Wang Yan, It turns out your honorable little brother is also at the residence. I saw him once a few years ago. At that time he was still young, now he carries such magnificence. Wang Yan replied, Aishian, that bastard, the more he grows the more he becomes like my dad, how could he be magnificent? This is Grand Tutor Yun's second son, Yun Yu. Aishian has been staying here for the past two days, so he invited him over for tea. Lan Ju suddenly understood. Turns out it's Grand Tutor Yun's second child, he's definitely an outstanding youth. It seems it won't be long before he can attend court. The younger generations are formidable. After Lan Ju placed Lan Hui at Wang Yan's residence, he felt reassured when locked up. The examination day had finally arrived. Zhang Ping and Chen Zhou got up early in the morning to arrive outside the exam venue, where they waited in line for their clothing inspection. They drew out their exam groups and room number. This year's imperial examination participants were nominated across 11 counties and the capital, there were 360 in total. The exam questions were divided into four categories, one's moral principles, ethics, virtue, and understanding of the law. Every 90 examines would be tested on the same categories. One's exam room number was arranged according to their exam category, neighboring rooms all held different exam questions to prevent cheating. Chen Zhou stood on his tiptoes and looked forward before breathing a sigh of relief. It's good that we came early we can still draw from the exam categories. 
those at the back can only pick up the remaining. After their clothing inspection, while they were waiting to draw out their exam room number, there was the sound of slight clamour at the front. Chen Zhou went on his tiptoes again and took a look, he laughed. Hey, hey, brother Zhang, Ma Lian got lucky, he managed to draw that haunted room, number 14. That exam room is particularly cursed. I've heard there was an examinee who couldn't answer the questions and died from anxiousness in there, those who enter will become scapegoats. Zhang Ping said, the scapegoat matter is a rumor, not to be believed. The examinee in front of them turned around with a smile. This brother is right. Ghosts are formless and invisible, how can people see them? These so-called ghosts are just the heart's delusions. Chen Zhou said, you've never seen anything odd before, so you naturally don't believe in them. But if cursed things truly exist, maybe there'd be a day you'll encounter one. Zhang Ping didn't say anything. The examinee replied with a smile, this brother's words are also reasonable. He looked very young, his clothes plain and simple. He was graceful and refined in a way Chen Zhou had never seen in his entire life, listening to his modest words, Chen Zhou decided to make friends with him, so he began to make chatter. I'm Chen Zhou, the one beside me is Zhang Ping. We're both examines from Zishuan County. What's your name? The examinee's eyes brightened. Could it be you're the young master Zhang who solved the great yellow immortal murder case? I've admired you for a very long time. He hadn't finished speaking before the person in front of him entered the exam venue. The examinee smiled regretfully before turning around and drawing out his exam category and room number, the examiner looked at his name card and only took out three exam tablets for him to draw from. Chen Zhou was slightly puzzled. When the examinee entered the exam venue and Zhang Ping began to draw, he whispered, there's clearly still four exam categories to draw from, so why is he only given three? There was a moment of silence around them. Someone from the back gently pulled on his sleeve and softly said, it turns out you don't know who he is, he's the former grand tutor Lu Xian's grandson, Lu Tung Ai Ai. The law exam papers were written by his uncle, Lan Ju, so they obviously couldn't put that in the draw. End chapter